missed a step and shattered my left shoulder. Shattered is the word the surgeon used. I was put under the knife for some two hours. He thinks that he has uh, properly put it together, but it's going to take some, some while to get back. He advises that if I want to get back, I promise you I want to get back, I should not remove the sling. In fact, without the sling, the kind of pain I'm experiencing is, is almost similar to that of childbirth. Um, pray for me also that I may get well. And so, every year I look forward to being here for the reasons I've already given you and for the reasons uh, my limo director gave us. But uh, I shall say this. Those are the things outside of class. I don't know who you respect more, your wives, or your husbands, or your mom. Whichever it is, after five, it used to be after four thirty, after five, do not do anything that you wouldn't do in the presence of the three people I've mentioned. <laughs> your wife, your husband, or your mom. Um, the rest is for you to conclude. Now, you see, we happen to be very lucky people. We happen uh, to be specially chosen by the Constitution to perform an extremely solemn duty to the people of the Republic of Kenya that pay our salaries with their taxes, ours included, of course. An independent, efficient, and accessible judiciary responsive to the aspirations of Kenyans and a true guardian of the rule of law, for me, ought to be our true north. The only objective for which we exist as judges and as the judiciary, at least that's how I see it. So the realization of this objective to me framed um, the theme of last year's colloquium. I'll remind us that last year we were discussing um, the theme of towards a people-centered access to justice, building courts of excellence in this country. Now this year, we are discussing, or we are here to think about the judiciary's role in realizing the social transformation promise of the 2010 Constitution, looking back, holding ground, and forging ahead. Now that is a further call to us to live up to the aspirational and transformational ideals for the administration of justice as framed by the 2010 Constitution. In looking back and holding ground, it recognizes our immense efforts and the great strides that we have taken as an institution in forging ahead. And it reminds us that more can be done and in fact, more must be done. Fellow judges, Last year, I asked us all, and as I said last year, I asked myself first, then I asked you, what social, a social transformation through access to justice would mean to each one of us? You see, our vision is derived from the 2010 Constitution. So how does it speak to us as judges? And more specifically, in the judicious adjudication of matters that are brought before us. How can a judge consider their role in the wider scheme to social transformation? I challenge all of us, I challenged us all last year 
to conceptualize how much social transformation can be achieved from within the judicial function, and that is to say, to problematize the very idea of justice that is being accessed. What kind of justice are we availing to those come seeking it from us? So both in content and in method, how are we doing it? Judiciary Academy has put together a program through which these three days, we shall interrogate and discuss these multiple aspects of social transformation through access to justice. From judicial independence and accountability, the two are a pair, to promoting a multi-door approach to access to justice, to developing indigenous social justice jurisprudence, to measuring qualitative performance and so social justice impacts of judicial activities, uh, we can all look forward to these three days. And to a most enlightening and revitalizing colloquium, I urge us all to participate and concentrate during the sessions to engage robustly towards uh, refocusing our energies on the realization of our stark vision. Our responsibility in this regard is both personal as well as corporate. And we must approach the task with steadfast unity. Thank you, Malimu, for inviting me to say those few words. I do hope that they make a difference to someone. Um, they do make a difference to me. I talk to myself more times than I talk to anybody else. Um, at this juncture, I would have said that I invite the Honorable the CJ to talk to us. On her behalf, I shall read the opening remarks uh, she had prepared before she was taken ill. Um, quite a lengthy thing here, but we have to do this. Let's hear what the team leader says about the 2023 colloquium. I shall read what is written. <clears throat> I'm truly delighted to be here with each and every one of you. This annual colloquium is more than just an event. It is a cherished reunion, a meeting of minds, and a wellspring of collective wisdom. It provides us with a golden opportunity, not only to connect, but also to exchange valuable experiences from our respective court stations. Since our last colloquium, we've had a number of new judges who have joined us at the Court of Appeal, the High Court, and the Environment and Land Court in a special way. And with great pleasure, I welcome the new judges to this family and also welcome all of you to this year's Judges Colloquium here at the city of Mombasa. I'd like to ex uh, express my sincere thanks to the Kenya Judiciary Academy, led ably by the Honorable Mr. Justice Dr. Smokin Wanjala. We have a galaxy of internationally acclaimed jurists, judges and other experts who will be speaking to us and sharing their experiences and perspectives with us. In particular, I recognize the presence of the Honorable Mr. Justice Emeritus Mohamed Othman, Chief Justice Andrew Nirenda Emeritus and Justice Moses Chinego for gracing our colloquium to bring us perspectives of judicial independence from the African continent. I also recognize um, I said I would read what is written our Excellency Patricia Scotland QC, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, who is not able to join us physically owing to the Heads of State Summits 
presently underway in Nairobi. She's, however, ably presented by our dear friend, to a friend to the judiciary. The Constitution reflects an in inflection point in Kenya's journey towards good governance and social justice. Born out of decades of struggle, the Constitution encapsulates the collective dreams of our people to build a Kenya that is democratic, accountable, and, and participatory, and socially just. As judges, we are entrusted with the sacred duty of not merely interpreting this charter, but breathing life into its promise of a more equitable, democratic, and socially just nation. As the custodians of the social transformation promise of the Constitution, the Constitution envisages that we are to be the enablers for the realization of its aspirations. We are to utilize the law to effect positive social change. We can and we must be enablers of the values and principles of governance that are embodied in the Constitution. Now, over 13 years since we began implementing and enforcing the Constitution, it's time to take stock. As the third arm of the government, have we lived up to the promise and potential that this historic character embodies? We must ask ourselves, are we delivering justice more effectively than before? Have we as a judiciary become more attuned to the justice needs of our society? Is the Kenyan citizen today more or less likely to walk into a courtroom assured of receiving judicial services that meet their expectations of fairness, excellence in service delivery? These are not rhetorical questions, but a call to introspection a challenge to align our daily work with the broader goals of social justice and transformation. Indeed, we have much to be proud of in terms of the progress we've made over the last 13 years as the institution of the judiciary. Our courts have issued judgments that are groundbreaking and have been uh, received with acclaim, not just in Kenya, but across the globe. It is an indication that our judiciary doesn't merely interpret laws, it, it participates in shaping the ethical and social frameworks within which our nation operates. Beyond jurisprudential developments, at an institutional level, we've done much more to improve the justice journeys of Kenyans over the last 13 years. We've embraced performance management and measurement. We've embraced leveraging on technology that incorporates virtual hearings, case tracking systems, and our latest offering, the ongoing nationwide rollout of e-filing that has seen nine counties onboarded to the e-filing system as part of our efforts to enhance the efficiency and accessibility of the justice system. We hope to have onboarded all our court stations to the e-filing system by April 2024. We've also made great strides towards ensuring that all Kenyans can conveniently access justice by opening up courts and sub-registries across the country. We are also rolling out tailor-made specialized courts that seek to respond more effectively to the justice needs of the vulnerable groups in our society. In addition, we've now mainstreamed court annexed mediation and alternative justice system as legitimate avenues for access to justice. Also not for the are the strides that we are making with respect to expeditious hearing and determination of disputes. 
an area that has historically been a challenge to the judiciary. In this respect, I'm happy to report that the close of the um, last financial year, 2021-2022, the Supreme Court attained a case clearance rate of 127% with only one single instance of adjournment being recorded. While the Court of Appeal attained a case clearance rate of 70% with an adjournment rate of 7% of scheduled case events. The High Court attained a case clearance rate of 110% with an adjournment rate of 7% of scheduled case events. The Employment Labor Relations Court attained a case clearance rate of 157 percent with an adjournment rate of 2 percent of scheduled case events, while the Environment and Land Court attained a case clearance rate of 146 percent with an adjournment rate of 13 percent of scheduled case events. The euphoria that greeted the 2010 Constitution has dissipated somewhat, giving way to questions about whether we have lived up to its transformative promise. Have we significantly addressed the aspirations of Kenyans for an efficient, independent, and trusted institution? Have we translated the spirit and letter of the Constitution into judgments that contribute to enhancing the human dignity of our people and promote social justice as aspired to in Article 19, sub Article 2 of the Constitution? And if not, why not? These questions should uh, invigorate us to strive for greater relevance to the people and efficiency in our roles as custodians of justice. Colleagues, the call by the Constitution that we should promote social justice entails more than just upholding the rule of law. It is to ensure the rule of justice. The rule of law, with its emphasis on order and stability, provides the framework within which we operate. But it is the rule of justice that animates that framework, filling it with meaning, relevance, and compassion. A country may have a robust legal system, clearly defined laws, and meticulously crafted rules. However, if that system is not administered with, with a sense of justice and compassion, it risks becoming an empty shell, a mechanical exercise devoid of purpose and humanity. I therefore urge you to strive to put compassion back in the exercise of the rule of the law. Let us always remember that compassion is not a negative, a negation of objectivity or an abandonment of judicial independence. It is rather a lens that brings our focus back to the individual human experience, enabling us to administer law in a manner that is both fair and humane. This also means that we should approach adjudication as an avenue for bettering human life and enabling the community's well-being in this way, we make judicial work an engine for social good. By doing this, our courtrooms will be spaces where the marginalized and the vulnerable can find their dignity and rights upheld. There will be arenas not merely of legal contest, but of human and social betterment. Brother and sister judges, other challenges remain with respect to the independence of the institution of the judiciary. 
I want to bring to your attention the challenges we are facing with respect to facilitating the administration of justice where other independent institutions encroach on the terrain reserved for either the judiciary or the Judicial Service Commission. Two examples of these challenges will suffice. One, the Judiciary Fund is not operating optimally as envisaged by the Constitution due to bureaucratic bottlenecks and roadblocks erected by the controller of budget. Two, the SRC has encroached on the JSC's mandate under Article 172.1b of the Constitution, which is what review and make recommendations on the conditions of service of the staff of the judiciary, falling outside remuneration and benefits for state officers. We are already engaging robustly with these institutions with a view of resolving these misunderstandings in line with the Constitution. And you heard what Commissioner Vice Chair of JSC Acharya Anjero told us this morning. Internally, we still have challenges relating to enhancing public confidence and trust in judicial processes. Public confidence is enhanced when courts, court decisions are predictable and consistent. These are critical aspects of a well-functioning legal system. Individuals and entities should anticipate how a court will rule on a particular legal issue or case and the extent to which similar cases are decided similarly over time. This promotes legal certainty and helps people make informed decisions, both in their personal lives and in business transactions. Similar cases with similar facts and legal issues should surely be decided in a similar manner. We need to be aware that the litigants we serve are an enlightened lot, scrutinizing determinations on every issue and the findings of other courts on the authorities that are cited. The other pers uh, persisting concern relates to delay in delivery of judgment and the emerging concern related to failure to avail judge, uh, judgments promptly to litigants after delivery, after pronouncement is what is written here. I urge all of you, brother and sister judges, to strive to adhere to the stipulated statutory timelines for delivery of judgments and avail judgments to litigants immediately after pronouncement. Lastly, we are at the tail end of transforming our institutional vision stage into a strategic blueprint. We've endeavored to make the blueprint development process as participatory as, and as inclusive a process as possible to give everyone within the institution an opportunity to tell us what initiatives and interventions they want to see the institution pursue going into the future. Pursuant to this, there is a short questionnaire, also accessible from a QR code, that will be going round that we urge you to fill to enable us get feedback on which initiatives or priority areas you would like to see the institution, your institution focusing on. To conclude, our role as judges is not merely to interpret the law, but to infuse it with the spirit of social transformation envisaged by our Constitution 2010. As we look back to assess our journey, let us hold our ground by affirming what we have done right and forge ahead by courageously tackling what remains to be done. Finally, let the 2023 Judges Colloquium be remembered 
as the forum where as the College of Judges of this great republic, we committed ourselves anew to our noble and majestic mandate as enablers of the social transformation promise of the Constitution 2010, let us reaffirm our dedication to a justice that is compassionate, an interpretation and application of the law that serve humanity and a professional life that above all seeks to uplift and signify each and every Kenyan. Thank you. And may this colloquium serve as a wellspring of inspiration, debate, and transformative action. I now declare the 2023 Judges Annual Colloquium officially opened. Signed, Mother Collins. And so we are now officially opened. Uh, of course, we, we defer always to director. But let me say something I should have said in the beginning, which is oh, the Honorable the Registrar, Chief Registrar of the Judiciary did it, which is all those judges who are attending the judges colloquium for the first time, please come to the front. Judges act faster. We endeavor to work as a team. As I welcome you to the family that is the judiciary of Kenya, you will respect your elders and they will respect you in return because respect is a two-way thing. Um, all of us seniors will welcome in the manner we want these babies of ours to the family of the judiciary. Shall we clap? <laughs> the babies to the judiciary, please do the right thing, always. Try, it's not very difficult. When you don't do the right thing, ask yourself why you didn't do the right thing and whether in fact it is possible to make amends and go back to do the right thing. Karibu sana on behalf of all of us, the team leader and the rest of us, Karibu, you are in the right place. I do not know an employer better than the judiciary. I do not, SRC notwithstanding. <laughs> I do not know a place where if you want to serve God, this is a place from which to serve God. Because, <laughs> After God, it is we with that pen. Now you want to wrong God, you will deal with him. Sita kwa hapo mimi al deal kivyangu. Karibu to the judiciary of Kenya.